fix my hair. <laughs> there. All right. My hair's a mess. I don't care. Hey, welcome back to the RV Solar channel. <laughs> and uh, your hair products, though, this is right over there. Where? No, I'll just, <laughs> we're being a little goofy here today. Uh, we're working on a nice, interesting little project here. Uh, we got this big battery we're putting together. That's one of the reasons why we're starting it here. Uh, it's a fun little project. It's not a typical project. I'll and that's a little. It's going to weigh more than both of us combined. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's full of it tonight. Uh, it's a uh, kind of a box truck build. You'll probably see it coming up, but uh, we're going to be putting this big battery together and then putting into it. This video is not going to be how to put the battery together. Maybe we'll do one of those uh, in the future. This battery is the first of its kind that we've put together and installed. So we'll see how it goes, but I think it's going to work out really well. It's a 48 volt system. We're gonna be doing a multi plus, uh, I think 2000 watts of solar. Uh, using a rack system on a box truck. So if that is of interest to you, definitely stick around. So JD here is working on a... Uh, 50 amp shore cord. Yeah, he, you haven't been seeing him much on the channel because he's been working on, on his bus, which is right through this wall now. I did not drive it through the wall. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you don't know who JD is, if this is the first time on your channel, uh, he works with us uh, in the, sometimes in the summer, and he also operates uh, Soda Solar Quartzite Arizona. location. So if you're looking for work to be done there, this is the guy you're going to be working with, unless he can yeah. wrangle me down there, but uh, I like to play beer league hockey, so it's a little the, tough for me to get out there. The weather is a lot nicer down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah well. High mid-60s. So this is the uh, case that we're going to be using. Uh, this is... Not something we designed, this is something we bought. Um, it is from the, it's called the Apex DIY 280 box. Um, if it turns out to go well, uh, we'll definitely drop a link uh, in the description. If not, you're gonna have to hunt it down yourself because I don't want to endorse something that's not good. Uh, and then uh, who knows, if they're good enough, maybe we'll sell them on our uh, forever coming website and e-commerce store. Uh, but I got some, uh, instructions to go through, and uh, JD is probably going to laugh at me and heckle me a little bit because he's actually already put together two of these. This is my first one. Um, he said it went pretty well. It took him about a half an hour each. That's a joke. It took backwards. No, that first one took me four hours, five hours. Okay. It took a few. There was a, there was a a pretty big learning curve. Well, actually, I got delayed in the middle of it too. So then when I came back to it, I had to rethink it. All right. All right. So anyway, I'm going to start putting this together tonight. That's going to be my project, and uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, it's using these 280 amp hour cells, which uh, these are cells that are in almost all batteries, uh, from our SOKs that we use quite a bit to, uh, this is another little thing we're working on, a failed Chins battery, but uh, same blue cells are in these. This is pretty much in all the batteries these days, so... This is just putting one together, but it's a pretty economical way to do it. Uh, the only downside to this, I would say, is it is super heavy. Uh, I think we estimated 250-ish is what it's going to weigh. Yeah. I guess yeah. not more than both of us combined. No. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about the system in general. The, oh, the system, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're heavy. All right, I better get to it. All right, JD's inspecting yeah. my work here. Feet. Even though he's done this a couple of times. Looks great. Yeah. Just just wonderful. Yeah, you didn't need those wires there anyways. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, yeah, this is what we put together. Took, uh, it's about a little after 10.30 now. Uh, what, here's what I did like, a lot of extra parts, screws, and that's by design, at least that's what JD tells me. They gave an extra screw, at least an extra screw or two for every type. Every type of screw, yes, it was yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> Even was... the ones that, like the ones that were just holding on the, the face covers and the tops, those ones were not required for the actual build. They still had in the little baggie all the screws for everything still. Yeah, I got a couple of them here. Mm -hmm. So that was super nice. Uh, finally got it. We got it charging at, uh, whatever, five amps here. So JD said this will probably take a week or two <laughs> at this rate. We just wanted to test to make sure it was actually taking a charge. And it looks like it is. So here's a look at the screen there. Um, obviously some... It's, it's from China, so it's got some Chinese stuff on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, here's a close-up look of all the parts in there for the most part. Everything that you see here is in any other battery. These are just the balance leads 
And these are how the cells are put together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's even, what I liked is there's even a inline fuse in there. Yeah, that was uh, really nice. So basically the way I think of it, if the, if the batteries are indi individually fused, you can run those in parallel as much as you want. Mm -hmm. And if you got a problem, they'll they'll pop themselves. So, all right, um, I think that's all I got for tonight. All right, next morning, we're starting to get our board put together here. But I figured before I do that, I wanted to make sure that the Serbo GX could communicate with this battery because if it can't or can't easily, I would have to put a shunt in the system to measure the battery. But as uh, some of you eagle-eyed viewers will notice. We have battery connectivity here, and we're doing it through the uh, VE CAN port here, and in there, in the CAN port on there. And what I had to do is I had to make a special cable. Victron actually sells one. It's called a uh, VE CAN Type 2 cable, and uh, I don't know, maybe someday I'll do a guide on that, but it wasn't terribly hard to do. It took me a couple of tries. Screwed up once or twice. But uh, yeah, check this out. Oh. So we get uh, full details on that. I mean, on the, you get all the cells, all that stuff. It's tracking the capacity. This is, again, this is 280 amp hours at 24, or at 48 volts rather. That's like well over a thousand at 12, for those of you that are familiar with that. So, uh, with this working now, I feel like I can put this board together now. And my plan is to put this board, it's gonna sit like this, and some of the components here in the inverter is gonna be right on top. I'll show you where that's gonna end up in here. Here is the box truck. So, battery is gonna sit here, and the board will be right there should work out very well. Well, it's been a couple of days and uh, we've been hard at work on this thing, as you can see. We've got uh, four of these giant 500 watt panels on this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a little box truck. And uh, yeah, we're gonna cut those off. I haven't done that yet. But uh, we got solar run in, it's all warm, or it's all uh, wired up and it's working, that's great. I wanted to show you a little bit kind of how things have come together here. We have our board installed. We've got some raceway covers and some other covers to put on, as you can see here. But I figured I'd show you a little bit of work in progress. Got some other covers to go on. And uh, we do have our screen going there. <clears throat> and uh, of course this battery here is assembled, fully assembled and working. And boy, I tell you what, I really kind of like these. If you need this kind of energy, and you don't need to be able to pull it out very often because it is pretty heavy. It's about 250 pounds, uh, but it's 280 amp hours at 48 volts. Wow. Like, uh, yeah, that's 14 kilowatt or so of energy. That's just amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, so on this, yeah, something I want to talk to you about real quick was, is that going to go on? There we go. Uh, this battery here says it's 100%, right? And actually, oh, before I get too into that, this does communicate natively with this. I think we talked about that before, but you get full uh, control on this, and actually this battery communicates with the Serbo and uh, the MultiPlus and the solar charger such that um, it is actually sending its battery charge parameters to the system and charging based on what it wants. And it'll even do some really interesting things like as it gets near the chop of charge, it'll actually start throttling the uh, charge amps down so that the battery can balance a little bit better. A lot of cool stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, something I want to mention, especially when you're first setting up your system, is you may see your battery say 100%, like this one here does. This is 100%, but it's still not. And a big way you can tell is just take a look at these cell voltages here. Uh, you want to see 3.5 something, ideally 3.6, 3.55, something like that. That's how you know the battery's full. And what that actually translates into is, let's say it's a 
12 volt battery, you're looking for a voltage of over 14. If it's a 24 volt battery, you're looking for something over 28. And if it's a 48 volt battery, we're looking for something closer to 56 volts. And as you can see here, we're at 53 still. We potentially have a long way to go on this battery before it's full. So you've got to calibrate the what does 100% mean before you can really trust this. So always, I call it sanity check. Anytime you see your battery say 100% sanity check the voltage. If it's still charging, ooh, we just got some sun that popped out. Hopefully we see this jump up. Yes, we do. Come on. It should go way higher. Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. I know we've got 2,000 watts on there, but uh, uh, the sun angle is pretty low. It's just right there in the sky somewhere. Welcome to mid-October in Minnesota, I guess. So anyway, you want to, desan you want to sanity check that uh, when it's charging. When it's discharging, it may be a little bit different. I hear people all the time, they'll say, oh, I've got a, you know, a solar system and uh, by 9, 10 o'clock, my batteries are 100% and they were down to 60% the night before. Well, unless you've got a ridiculously large solar array, it is not 100%. Uh, if you've got a 12 volt system, I see, I hear this a lot, or I see this a lot, you may be at uh, like, a 12 volt battery thinks it's potentially full at anywhere from 13.2 to 13.3 volts if you're using a very rudimentary uh, battery monitor. If you're using something that's actually tracking the amps in and out, it's it shouldn't say that, but it may depending on how it's configured and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm saying. You got to sanity check it. You got to make sure your amps in has to equal your amps out or your amps out has to, for it to be 100%, you got to push those amps back in. So if you used 100 amps and you've only got, let's say, a 20 or 30 amp charger, you didn't get that thing charged in one or two hours. It's going to take at least three, maybe four at 100% capacity, which you're probably not going to be getting this time of year. So anyway, that's a whole longer speech I could give. All right, a couple other finer points on this system. Uh, we're running the shore power into, into the MultiPlus here. Uh, the other thing I'll mention on this 48 volt MultiPlus, it's a little smaller than the 24 and 12 volt versions. I like that. Uh, we're running a 10 gauge, 10.3 uh, uh, flexible wire down through here into uh, a hole with a grommet and some uh, foam, zip tied that underneath to a standard RV port. So my customer could just plug right in if they want to. And as you can see, they have a generator here and their plan for that is to slide it out and then they could run the generator cord right, right there if they want. So that's how they're gonna handle the generator charging. Uh, oh, look at this. Wow, that's called edge of cloud right there. 1200 watts. I love that. That is so great. I can feel it. The sun. Ooh. See what edge of cloud is, is all these little clouds are acting like little suns right now. And so you got the main sun, right? But then you got all these little ones that are also adding it to, it's almost like a lens. It's redirecting some of the light, uh, to the solar panel. So that's why you get such good solar sometimes on a partly cloudy day, but I'll still take a clear day over this because the ebbs and flows of this don't make up for just pure sun. Okay, last thing I'm gonna update on this is, uh, what you may not notice is there's no, uh, we're only using two of the outputs on the links here. And partially the reason for that is there's not a DC system on here yet. There may be in the future, we uh, may be adding, if the customer wants, a step-down converter or there's some other things like that. But for right now, the customer's thinking about leaning into 120 volt lighting and everything and just running it like a house, because why not? And uh, so this may be a continually uh, collaborative project as this customer continues to build out this adventure vehicle that they got going on. So I got a little bit more work to do on this to uh, wrap it up, uh, button everything up. And I'll also bring you up top and uh, we'll talk about how we mounted those panels and uh, all that sort of stuff. Maybe talk about that racking system if you're interested in that. So stick around. And uh, while you're waiting, why don't you hit the subscribe button down below. That'll help uh, me and uh, JD. Oh, there's his bus right there. There's a JD bus sighting. Uh, it'll just help us out, you know, feed the YouTube algorithm. Feed it. All right, isn't this pic picturesque? We got a nice blue sky, and uh, we're inspecting our solar panel installation on this uh, 
This is 2,000 watts again on a rail system. And uh, we did get a little rain. So you can see uh, what that does to things. But uh, yeah, this is how commercial solar systems are often installed. And why sometimes I think I'm seeing people make your installs way too complicated when it comes to rails. Uh, this is all it needs to be. This is a Unirack railing system. So this is all aluminum. Uh, these L feet come with it. And uh, you do a mid clamp here. And you got an end clamp over there. And they pretty much just clamp the panel down. They got little spikes that actually go into the panel itself. These are both aluminum. So, which is kind of a soft metal. So it ends up grabbing into it. And of course, you know, you gotta torque these down with a couple of Oga Dugas. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, that's, that's how it goes. Uh, this actually didn't take too long to install. The hardest part was actually just getting the wiring because I basically had to uh, start here and move this way. And every time I'd put one down, I'd have to pull the wires out and do my wiring. This ended up being a uh, 2S, 2P configuration. So these two are in series and those two are in series. And then I put the whole system in parallel and ran it down and there we go. So uh, this works really, really well. The other thing I like about it is if you got to swap one of these panels out for some reason, you just undo four uh, 13 millimeter bolts, pop the panel out, pop the new one in, done. Super easy. And the other one stays secure. So loved how this turned out. And I know everyone's always curious, well, how does it look from the bottom? Well, this is about how it looks. And uh, maybe it's a little peculiar, but then again, box trucks don't necessarily look all that normal either, do now, do they? Uh, I wouldn't personally be all that worried from, a lot of people say, well, they're worried about wind getting un up underneath them. Uh, they're not gonna carry the roof away. Uh, for the most part, the air is going this way. And now it is coming straight up over here, but most of that air ends up going up and over. Uh, but uh, sounds like the customer may end up uh, putting some kind of fairing on there or, uh, you know, <laughs> I always like talking about our bus. This is my bus over here and you can kind of see what I did there is where I, uh, I made a, a ramp or fairing a little bit out of solar panels. This is close to about wrapping this one up. Obviously, I'm going to cut those off yet, but I think the customer and I, we were just chatting about what to do there. Uh, so here's how... This all turned out, everything covers on everything. Look at that. And uh, once you know it, we are still not full. Yeah, pop quiz. How do we know we're not full? Well, it says 100%, but it's still, still taking amps and the battery is not past 56 or 55 volts. We're still at 53, so this may have quite a bit left to charge. So we're just gonna let it continue to do that. So thanks for hanging around this long to the end of the video. You are my true fans who hang around this long. And uh, if you know of anybody who needs uh, solar put on a box truck that they're gonna turn into a camper or a work truck, whatever, we can do that for you. We can design the system. Uh, we love doing creative, kind of interesting projects like this. Uh, you can check us out at sotasolar.com, spelled like that. Hopefully you can figure it out. If not, uh, just do your best punching it into Google. Maybe it'll show up. <laughs> I'll also leave a link down uh, in the description below. So uh, until next time, we will catch you later and uh, you guys have a great day.